Hey everybody, this is Rhino and we're back to MTG Arena. Today is Friday, November 22nd. I'm uh, drinking a five hour energy drink, so hopefully we can go a little bit longer than Wednesday. And let's see, is there anything else to really talk about? A lot, we've gotten an update, so a lot has changed here. So we have a blue, black, and then creature spells. I would see re-roll re this one for sure. Uh, play 25 lands, play 20 creatures. Those are going to be pretty easy daily quests to do. So then we're mostly looking for wins, as it were. We've gotten an update here where they're trying to push Historic. And the thing about this is I think if you turned off this so that you can see the advanced things, I guess Historic is something that hasn't been in the game before it's instead been traditional which <laughs> these key phrases of different play styles are going to be a little weird um, so they're doing a launch for historic which would be old cards but then they're also doing kind of a good deal where you can bundle deals on throne of eldraine styles and card styles for for the first historic historic anthology uh, and the historic anthology is 20 cards from previous expansions that you could purchase from the store and we'll look at that meanwhile there's some banned cards that are more modern cards and there's this historic event which if I played this almost certainly I would get the card styles of cards I don't have we probably should do this um, so here you have a uh, which is a little zoomed up zoomed more I think that's core 11 card a core 10 card I have no idea what that logo in the middle right is uh, that'll be true for I think all of these won't it because <laughs> these will all be expansions that are smack dab in the middle of me of the point where I was not paying attention to magic which is frankly the vast majority of magic at this point um, so the thing is about historic as it is is it only kind of makes sense I think for people who know what these cars are and have a bunch of the other cards from from Magic the Gathering Arena uh, that are older because I imagine historic will just start to have more and more cards added to it as things get more and more bundled uh, uh, banned not bundled I was looking at the word bundled we have some other bundles here and money I could buy on skins but I don't think that's the right move I don't think spending gems or or money on skins is really what I should be doing if anything I should just be saving up for the next expansion now in paper magic throne of Eldraine is coming out of what they call allocation which is apparently something weird magic wizards of the coast does where they tightly control the flow of packs more than the fact that they're the only creator of the cards that suffer counterfeiters anyways but they're just like directly controlling it trying to manipulate the market so much of paper magic is about money manipulation and and crazy people saving uh turning it in into a lifestyle and turning it into a wall street bets style of uh, uh, of hobby instead of realizing that these are just cardboard things and they inherently really don't have any value and there's just a bunch of crazy people out there that are willing to put money into it so these cards that aren't playable in standard 
if you had been playing in the beta and if you had a decent amount of these cards, then Historic is probably for you. Even if you had not played any of these cards, but you had, say, a lot of the two Ravnicas, then it still kind of would make sense to play Historic. But I would say right now in particular, if you only had War of the Spark or Core 2020, or in my case, almost all my cards are Th Throne of Eldraine cards, um, Eldraine, Historic is totally not for me. Like, I, I'm still here just playing, trying to get the newest cards t to play the way they want you to play in, uh, in Arena. Yeah, the, the whole thing of Historic and Arena kind of falls apart because when, when you don't have the advanced modes out, you are just going to constantly be playing regular play mode or standard mode. So, like, I, I, you always are going to really want the newest of the newest cards. So do I want to spend a thousand to get this? It's free. Um, and this might be a different experience, so let's do it. Um, and let's see. Do we want to do anything crazy here? No. I think it's probably easier just to play my deck that I think wins the most. And we didn't change any cards there or anything like this. So this is an event that really is just playing regular standard magic. But when you win, eventually, when you get those five wins, you'll get this. But I also have locked myself into actually going for five wins where honestly I after I fell asleep on Wednesday I woke up late in the evening uh, after that point and tried to play a little bit of magic and tried to get the 10 victories since that really was a day where I should have tried to get this ooh this is the first Japanese symbol name I've seen uh, or any non-Latin character name in general. Um, perhaps with the update, we are seeing a compression of the servers, and we're playing Magic Arena now will be more along the lines of playing everybody in the world, not just uh, not just a small collection. Or a smaller subset of everybody in the world. Although I don't know for certain that that was ever the case. Like it may have been we were always all being matched up to two other people globally. Uh, so yeah, who knows? This this just may be a fluke, or this might be. A new thing that they just introduced where you you are allowed to use Asian characters and you weren't allowed to use Asian characters before. I have no idea why this guy thinks it's so important to uh, to know what cards I have. It's not gonna help him one bit <laughs> because before he even gets anything on the field I'm going to win. And he's trying to draw all these cards. But is there... Like, this is some symbol I don't recognize. So maybe you could play historic cards. Uh, as if that mattered. Clearly it doesn't matter that much. Whether you play with a, a modern deck or... A, a standard deck or, or a uh, historic deck. Um, honestly, it feels like they should have forced me to play a deck of their build, build a, a random selection of historic decks to try out cards that I don't have. Or at least said 
I can't enter this thing. Well, since they're celebrating the release of Historic, they would have to give us sample decks, something that we could play with. Um, so, yeah. I didn't do much other than upload videos and try to run backups. I'm stupidly moving, uh, attempting to use Duplicati version 2.0, which I had tried before and didn't work, but there were some problems with my server that that I think I've fixed. So uh, the reason why I want to use Duplicati 2.0 is uh, it's a software base that's still being worked on and updated, and it has the options to stop and start other programs which you really can't do too much of in Windows but there since I'm using Duplicati to back up to a next cloud server it would be beneficial to shut down the official net next cloud sync client which can't do like a full computer backup but instead syncs only uh, a smaller subset of folders uh, having two programs that are trying to sync the same files over and over again would not be beneficial. Uh, and I've been playing a Azure Lane on my phone and yeah, uh, it, it is a slow setup. I don't feel like in comparison to Destiny Child it was in any way this slow. And it still really doesn't feel like there's a good way to uh, to to just automate the process. Like I'm getting tons of oil, which is as yours lane equivalent to stamina, and um, and you just really don't have anything you can do with it to continuously play to continuously get experience, to continuously level up characters. Meanwhile, it also seems like you have a, a rather limited collection of characters. It's only about 300, I think less than 300. We're gonna have to, we're gonna have to exit already. Darn it. Yeah, this is still not working any better. That's a shame. Just every, we'll give it two minutes and then we'll, exit out and launch back in um, so yeah I'm probably not sticking with Azure Lane it, it, it's also kind of weird because after being ac accidentally clicking on the boobs of one of the anime slash anime girl slash anime uh, personified naval vehicle which is what the Azure Lane characters are uh, and then them having them yell at me for it and, and admonish me for it I, I tested it out on a different character and they actively said a line of dialogue um, or typed out a line of dialogue mentioning their own uh, busts but not really admonishing me so so the game is inconsistent to say the least I guess each character just has their own thing uh, but it definitely doesn't have that adult feel that Destiny Child has where uh, Destiny Child has just like a new character that they're they're teasing for the next their next expansion and, and she's just like uh, they always tease them on the front menu or a lot of them on the front loading screen and it's like that's really caught my attention as as this new character I'm like hello this this is an interesting character visually um, where, where you just get kind of like boring load screens in most games like if you have to have a load screen at the beginning of the game, ideally I'd like it not to have a load screen at the beginning of this game, but if it has to have one, putting in the effort to update it every two or three weeks is nice. Um, and, and change it around. So we're kind of in a weird position because 
I guess I'll try and get some recording done this weekend. Uh, but then, let's face it, Cyber Black Friday and Cyber Monday really start on this Monday and go all the way to next Monday. And my only thought is maybe there won't be a Steam sale around Black Friday and Cyber Monday, but I, I doubt that's really true. What does this guy do? I've seen a lot of people play this. Oh yeah, this is the one that puts land cards on the field. And then there's some other cards that synergizes with uh, synergizes with the idea of a land card being on the field. two attackers and attack. Um, so yeah, with with maybe a little bit of work going on, um, I'm mostly going to take the, the next week off, even more than I slack slack off normally in a week, which so, like this week has been pretty bad, not a lot of content getting me getting made although now it doesn't kind of really matter anymore either because we, we know that I really can only make two two time slots worth of content at any point um, there we go one again Let's see. Uh, so so that's just how it is. And, and with YouTube, they're saying you're legally complied with the with COPA, um, which is not true, actually. Uh, as a content creator, I'm not legally required to comply with COPA because I was never, as a creator, able to or, or in any way collecting data on children under 13 years old. That was YouTube not following the law. A very old law that they should have followed had they just not thought they were too, they were above it. Uh, and it would have been so easy for them to say, we're not going to collect any data on anybody who isn't logged in, and we're going to ask everybody their age when they log in. And anyone that has created an account on Google uh, to log into YouTube at that point uh, anyone that has an account before that point just needed to verify their age and you really would have only had to do that for people that created an account in the last 13 years so instead of going back and to the beginning of Gmail which could be 20-25 years uh, worth of accounts go back to the last 13 years and say hey are you over 13 um, yes no that's all you really had to ask and then you would have been in compliance and then if they're not logged in you just disable comments and you well you don't even really have to disable comments or anything you just to say yeah yeah you disable comments when they're not logged in that way you're not collecting data from in the sense of their comments uh, you d disable likes and downvotes and all of that and you just disable anything they can do uh, other than watch the video and you're fine because that's the only problem here that that the FCC had was that they were collecting data it's COPA is the Child Online Privacy Protection Act that's all they wanted they, they don't care that people are making videos targeted to kids. Uh, there's, there's probably some other laws and rules that might address that, but that's not what this was about. So now that YouTube is trying to tell 
content creators, well, you have to mark your kids as not for kids or not is is still really not YouTube doing the right thing at all uh, because they still need to verify and force everybody to to log in and that's I guess the one thing they didn't want to do and I guess that's probably a dirty little secret of YouTube is that I bet a significant amount of people are not logged in to any kind of YouTube Google account when they watch a YouTube video and they don't want to admit that and they don't want to admit that there is a major that that would add a slight barrier to entry and get less views um, but I mean in all seriousness while there probably is a point zero 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 one percent amount of people who would just refuse to ever have a, a Google account uh, everyone else in, on the internet already has one so so yeah they, they should just make people log in if they're gonna collect any data uh, and it, it's not too hard it's really really not that hard to, to make people log in to visit your account I ran into a website I won't mention the name but it is totally not compliant with anything um, it's a weird website to collect physical addresses to put into an address book of your friends hmm Ooh, there's a new little question mark what's this little do hmm yeah, see, there's no mention of scrying here. I don't know when, why, when, whether there was a rule at some point where you were scrying if you mulliganed below a certain number. It doesn't seem to really play that way. Uh, so yeah, this website, your friends, hopefully your friends and not just a scam. Uh, asks you to go there and quick and easy you put in your name your address and your birthday not the date and then it just says okay so hit the okay button and submit it doesn't have you check any box to agree to any terms of service it doesn't ask what your your birth year is so it doesn't know if you're under or over 13 it doesn't do anything uh, as far as uh, GDPR setting of cookies or anything like that uh, it just seems like it is the most basic of basic websites um, this is gonna be silly to do yeah this is dumb let's not do that yeah, it's dumb to kill my guy just so I can play this next turn and bring him back and put him on top of my deck. If anything, I should hold on to this until I play this. Alright. Alright, now. Let's kill this guy just to, to peeve him off. So yeah, and then and I guess if I was gonna make a website ten years ago and, and just like any a user sign up thing, I probably wouldn't have known about or cared enough about Copa or GDPR. But I think that also might be because neither one of those things were were even around when I was playing around with teaching myself like PHP programming web page programming and and MySQL database entry but also I guess as a programmer like it's it's not my job to follow the laws that I don't or be a hundred percent up on the laws I, that would be whoever hired me to program the website would also hopefully have a legal team telling me what I what they need and what they don't need 
but at the very least a terms and conditions seems reasonable so yeah this one website though at, at the end of the submitting my info I'm like did I just get put on a mailing list for a bunch of things uh, is this information being sold to third parties is this being kept at all like if, if it really is just a super basic website that's not not keeping any of the data at all which it is it has to be because it wouldn't be able to to for the information to be sent to the one person that you actually wanted it to to receive it um, all right play this and then here's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna play well if I play this yes see now here's the trick you take this action put that on top then that's back on the field and then we're set at least somewhat set now I just need to get them down below n n 9 damage and then I can destroy this once I have 10 non lands on the field and do 10 damage but also this moves you so fast down down the level that you can just keep on doing this and paying life. Do I have anything down here? Uh, this is great to play. And this is great to play. And yeah. Tap a target creature. attack with this one this one and this one hmm. let's see what they, what they do hmm I guess we kind of just need to to move into covering the games. We, we had a bunch of games left over uh, at the end of last stream because I ended early. And I don't really have anything to talk about other than I uploaded videos and then I thought I had some free time so I was uh, listening to music and, and starting a new project of getting playlists alphabetical making some alphabetical playlists where games starting with the letter a are just in the playlist um, because i think we probably are gonna start approaching a point where it's not realistic for people to try and scroll down through all my playlists uh not that anybody's watching my videos in any ways for anything uh, but that being begrudged um, the there's at so i i did like numbers and symbols a b and i think c i haven't done and then i looked at the videos that i had uploaded in the past month or two and realized i had totally forgotten to put any in-screen uh things on there um any in-screen recommendations to other videos which yeah i totally want that <laughs> that so so I instead of doing what I needed to do that I'd forgotten I had done hadn't done I, I started a different project which just means I I need to go back and get it done right uh, my software uploading video still is kind of a mess it, it works for about 10 videos and then it screws up and when it screws up there doesn't seem like there's much of a there's any way to recover it so you just have to uh, remove all all the queued videos and start over from scratch uh, and re reset the settings the good news is it's not super hard to reset the settings but doing it two or three times is not fun to say the least uh, 
let's see. There's... This is probably going to affect video games, but I, I just saw a headline that that Russia has banned all the sales of electronics with that doesn't have Russian software programmed into it, which almost certainly means some kind of backdoor spyware being put into like all smartphones, smart TVs, and and other devices. Um, how that would affect a console, I have no idea, because I can't imagine that there's there's a way to to put a Russian programmed uh, version of of whatever operating systems run an Xbox or a PlayStation 4. So so it, it pretty much just is going to send. Russians back to buying things off the black market not that it that's any different I think from what most mostly happens anyways is that almost nothing in Russia last time I heard was actually being sold by the right right people uh, like all the software even if you buy if, even if you go into a computer store and buy buy something that looks like it's a version of Windows you're probably buying something that that's been cracked and isn't legitimate there's just like no established business lines or enforcements of copyright law or chains of distribution um, in a lot of ways Russia is the new Wild West um, and so yeah, just take that for whatever it is Meanwhile, then there also is the argument that all the companies like Activision and Blizzard who are trying to court getting tons and tons of business in China have been completely undercut by the fact that China put in is trying to implement a a hugely controlling limits on kids playing video games. Um, which yeah see that that's still as as wrong as I, I think it probably is that corporations can gain so much power in the United States and basically sue the US government into doing whatever they want at the very least that does have some benefits um, instead of a business trying to to do business in an authoritarian country that will just change the rules on you flippantly uh, at any moment and you having no recourse or redress whatsoever mm. so yeah and, and I guess when you take it away from corporations and you just talk about well it for as little power as U.S. citizens individually have, or even as a group have, at least they have a, some power to to vote out congressmen, senators, and and other politicians. Whereas um, in China, it is the Communist Party's decision who's going to be the president, and that's pretty much it. Man. They really need to address this issue. I I don't know if this is just because I'm streaming and I just don't have enough upload bandwidth or what, but they, they really need to address this issue. It's taking way too long for it to find games. But then when it does find a game, it seems like it works fine. Uh, by the way, the friends list it was delayed. Well, I think I have a tweet about that. So... Uh, unfortunately they, they they said they ran into a scaling issue which pretty much means that they in no way planned ahead to for a friends list to actually work um, I mean it, it is totally not hard to to realize that if you've got a certain number of people you're gonna have to have a certain number of lists and each list is going to need to be 
potentially as big as the friend limit um, and you're going to have a certain number of people at a peak point all trying to access those lists and if they're all trying to access those lists that means you need a a bunch of clones and mirrors of that default list a default database to check that information and you probably would want to program that as a token so you would take like a user ID and uh, whenever a user well it depends on whether you want the friends list to actually pop up and say your friend is now online uh, why don't you play him or if what you just want a friends list that is uh, that doesn't check for if the other person is online or doesn't check very often you, you can kind of do it either way frankly um, like Hearthstone it would pop up anytime somebody came online and it would allow people to chat which there's been no talk about the friends list actually turning into any kind of chat um, system which I'm not sure you even really need that frankly because if you want to chat with people it'd probably be helpful like Discord or some other service would probably be better in the long run, but it might be a little bit helpful for people to say hi. Uh, but yeah, what what you could do is you could have one master server checking if when people log in or log out and then you would take that master server and compare it to friends lists then you would you would notify everybody on the friends list that are also on online too so you, you could significantly reduce the amount of signals that are getting sent out and uh, you could set it as something as a simple binary is is this is there an update if so make this binary value one if there isn't a update make this binary zero um, or you could go into some more complicated forms of of push pull networking technology where you push a signal when there's a change instead of having the client pull the information or pull the information every few seconds um, yeah that that would be ideally what you'd want is you'd want the server to push it push a signal when there's been an update and if there's been an update then you have the client decide whether it wants to pull and pull that information or not uh, to reduce the amount of time you would spend there uh, and the amount of bandwidth and such by the way these are also counting as non-land so like this synergizes with this and this and synergizes with this uh, a lot more than you would think it did uh, but yeah because the more things you have the quicker this goes down and yeah next turn I play this oh nope he just destroyed my card send it to the graveyard which is the right card to send away but maybe not a good enough card to get rid of <laughs> but I uh, I know it's probably 
sorry. It's probably sounded like I'm mostly rambling in the last thing, but if if you're not into programming, try to understand the the difference of of bad programming where you would have everybody who's playing Magic Arena asking uh, asking a central central server. One would hope asking a central server and not just pulling all the other people playing arena because that'd be totally insane uh, but asking a central server hey is friend number one with this id online hey is friend number two with this id online uh making 10 20 100 whatever the max limit of friends would be request all the time or every five seconds just making those same requests over and over again um, that how inefficient that would be where it would be way more efficient if it just asked if every client said hey here's my user ID has there been an update or a change to my f to to the online status of my friends list which you already know and then you get a binary yes uh, one for yes or zero for no and then pulling uh, receiving all the information th that you would want to um, receive and probably you'd want to do it in one fell swoop to and and just say yes here's here's the user IDs that have now changed from uh, being online to offline um, that would be way more efficient and then you can add a little bit more efficiency by instead of having each user each person running this client uh, asking if there's been an update to just having every one of these clients just have a open stream in the same way that it receives all the other data it receives and whenever it gets a update signal it responds there but that's that really doesn't have anything to do with them t saying scaling issue scaling issue just means that they're cheap and they they're, they're incompetent and they didn't program uh, they didn't plan ahead which that almost certainly will be the downfall of magic arena and could be the downfall of any large number of of collectible card games like we've seen plenty on on Steam that that just don't have enough people on them to for them to work. Uh, but then there's also a few that could have been successful, but then didn't have the preparation and planning in, enabled enough to to realize that they would have to run a bunch of servers for that to work uh, for their game to be viable on a larger. Uh, larger perspective hmm. so let's go over to this mastery tree what are we gonna do now we, we did a full run here and so I think this is the next one we want to do yeah and this one and this one. I don't know why they decided to make this whole zigzag. It doesn't even really feel like it's following a pattern of this background area, but maybe it's supposed to be. Hmm. Alright, back to the historic anthology event, which is basically nothing. And, and we can do a good exam. Uh, uh, experiment after this I guess because we know we just got after this next win we'll, we'll know we have just received five cards that would have been historic cards that would have not been something that I have received in any other way and so if we go into our collection and look for cards that are not core 2020 and not spark uh, cards and not Eldrain cards and we have any at all then that does tell us that we are actually getting the cards when we get the card styles 
and and not just getting a collection of card styles for cards we don't have which might also be what's going on here and I'm just too dumb to realize it um, so there is something to that uh, let's start covering video game news uh, Blair Witch is coming to the PS4 next month and it's also getting DLC I'm moderately excited to see if they can actually turn what was an interesting first movie that then got ringed out for as much money as possible in its sequels and prequels and and such um, I could see how making a horror game around the Blair Witch movie might work because we've seen plenty of other horror games where it's wandering around the forest and and not really not really having much more plot than that and it seems like that works pretty well next we have a game on steam called doom in the dark 2 which it doesn't make any sense why you would name your game that it really does feel like you're just going for some name confusion now this character here I wanna this character here can we get a bigger picture not really looks like a Jessica Rabbit fan uh, but here you have a game with dark screenshot syndrome that looks like it's probably an asset flip first-person shooter but it doesn't look too bad the main problems with this game are the name calling anything doom that isn't an id software doom game is dumb uh, and spelling it weird is dumb and having such a terrible thumbnail is dumb and then the name of the business is Indie Game Studio. And then here we have, uh, let's see, let's see some other games that they've made. Uh, Chainsaw, Ebola, 25 Cards of Death, 1406. All of these are mixed. Indie Game Studio Bundle 2. There's House of Evil 2. There's 1620, Centralia. Those are negatively, those last three are negatively reviewed. Uh, Doom in the Dark came out March 8th. Doom in the Dark 1 came out March 8th, uh, 2019. So here we clearly have a troll developer, publisher on Steam, putting out a bunch of garbage games and yet being allowed to do it. And what's interesting here is this screenshot, exact same screenshots. So fraudulent, too. Like, well, somewhat, I guess. I suppose it is possible that this character is just exactly the same. It's just copy and pasted from the first game. Almost certainly it is, come to think of it. They're saying this is similar to The Evil Within. Uh, yeah, no reviews. Let's see. Horribly unpolished and pointless. You'll lose interest in five minutes. Um... Yep. So, yeah. Somebody should be curating games. Although, it's kind of... It's kind of... We're kind of in a different position, I guess. Like, now that Valve actually is pretending like they're making games again. Um, between Artifact, which was a huge failure. And... Uh, and this Half-Life Alex, which I watched the trailer for, and it's kind of great, but it kind of sucks in a lot of ways too, because it's VR only, so it just gives me an excuse to say, well, this is just another reason why I should probably never bother to get into Half-Life. Um, for people that are going to get into VR, or uh, are such huge Half-Life fans that that they're willing to buy a VR headset for their Half-Life Alex, I guess they're going to be very hyped about this. Uh, but I think probably this this should have been a game that was released super quick after it was announced, uh, so that people couldn't really think about it and really start pricing out just how expensive it is going to actually be. Uh, see 
because once you start to to make that realization that that it is going to be incredibly incredibly expensive to to buy a VR headset to play Half-Life Alex, which actually I would say probably looks like potentially the first VR game that actually looks like a video game and doesn't just feel like it is a uh, tech demo that that is super short and unpolished and do it doesn't look or feel through the demo the Half-Life Alex doesn't look like it is just standing in one place and playing a shooting gallery uh, so I could see certainly people inside of Valve in particular working on this and getting super hyped and thinking this is the next big thing this is going to be the thing that establishes uh, establishes VR and this is going to be the system seller and this is the thing that's going to make VR be successful going forward but I don't really think that's the case I, I just don't don't feel once the the money starts getting calculated once the price of a VR headset gets calculated it's not going to work now, if they took the ha VR requirement out, I think then I probably would be on board with buying Half-Life Alex. But I'm in a weird position since I haven't played Half-Life 1 or 2 or any of the Half-Life at all. The only thing I've played is the Portal series. Uh, so Half-Life Alex is between Half-Life 2, I believe, and Half-Life to episode one or half-life episode one no i guess that i guess it is half-life two episode one isn't it isn't that i'm not sure if that's where you're named or not um so yeah because it's in between two games i would kind of need to play between those two games, wouldn't I? Hmm. Yeah, that's where it's gonna get weird. Certainly. Hmm. What does this guy do? So I need this guy to attack with something that I can potentially kill. Now I've got to discard two cards, seriously? So yeah, if they made Half-Life Alex in a way so it didn't really require VR, then I'd probably be hyped enough to start thinking about playing up until that point in the story so that that would make some more sense. Um, so that, so that would, there would be a realistic reason to play that way hmm well, I guess I guess I guess I can just run. yeah you can only do 11 damage right now so as long as you can't do more should be fine Alright, Gamatsu has an article here. Family Tennis SP is coming to the Switch on November 28th. So, I don't know specifically how you would... Like, I guess the Switch controllers are effectively just Wii Motes. And that's all you would really need. So, he almost won, but he was too short. 
Yeah. It, it was weird, I think, that you didn't get a Wii Sports bundled in with the Wii U, and you didn't get, even if it was just Wii Sports again, um, and, and you didn't really get something like that kind of bundled into, let's see, um, do I need to play any more of this? Because if I don't need to play any more of this, I have no desire to play any more of this. Like, yeah, I just got a bunch of skins. So let's go do the collection. Which I guess would be decks and then collection here. It's a little surprising that they don't just have a collection button here. Uh, there's enough room on a 1080p monitor. And you certainly could have some of these buttons uh, disappear. So here's what we want to do. Um collected and we'll see Alaxian this 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 so we do have Ravnica cards we do have Ravnica Alliance and Guilds and War of Spark and Core 2020 so but it seems like we don't have any of this well, no, we do. I have exactly five cards here. So, yeah. This card is not playable in standard. This crafting will consume one wild card. Apparently this is playable in standard. Uh, right? This is not playable in standard. This is not playable in standard. This is not playable in standard. So yeah, revitalize if opt. Let's, let's go back here though. That doesn't seem right. That does not seem like that was the cards we got. Um, this was. Yeah, these are different cards. So where did those cards come from? Hmm. Alright, let's just look at the historic anthology one. Alright. So Historic Anthology One didn't seem like it gave us those cards because we don't really have any other limiting factors here yeah here's definitely one card we just got skins for so we would have to craft this why would I want to craft these cards and I got five skins of what looks like 20 cards and I guess these are the cards that are just good enough that people want to see him come back or Wizards of the Coast at least thinks that people want to see him come back uh, and that they aren't they aren't so incredibly broken that it's a problem meanwhile let's see if we can understand we must have just been picking up some random cards like this for different reasons. Some of these I know are in the basic set too. Um, but another thing to take from this is probably how many cards we have that have this kind of skin with the tilt shift imagery versus this kind of skin, which I guess this is a nice division between what you kind of expect as far as art in a video game versus what you would have to live with as far as a paper card game. Uh, although, again, if I was to compare this to like Destiny Child, each one of these characters would be a live 2D, 3D animated uh, 
character that would just pop out and move around and look very much alive. Uh, it would be amazing if they actually did adopt reanimating and reprogramming all of these cards as live 2Ds. But I don't know how that would even really work very well for them because um, the cards kind of need to look like the cards do in the real world. Uh, it's not, it wouldn't be until the point that they they gave up printing magic cards to get all together. Or they just weren't, weren't putting the same cards in Arena as they were in Paper Magic. It wouldn't be until that point that things would uh, could drastically change. Because if this Child of the Night, for instance, looked five times better in arena than they did in the card game than in the paper printed version that that would be a problem but it would also be very helpful for arena players because sometimes characters like this like i've seen this card hundreds of times i play this cards all the time i still really don't know what it's showing me um i think i've just realized that this is upside down this is a bloodthirsty aerolist who is hanging upside down from her knees. And the yellow streaks on the left and right are actually candles that are right side up. And so the whole image is upside down. Yeah, I didn't realize that until just now. A lot of these images, I, I would have to see them full screen. I bet there's some kind of website out there that has like high quality scans of all these images of uh, magic. In fact, I, w I wouldn't be surprised if, there, if there's some kind of art book or, or torrent out there of just high quality scans of all the images that you could set as your background. Um, that let me know in the comments if you know of some website where I could go and look at these cards better and, and kind of get a better perspective of the images on them although the images aren't the main thing to focus on of course the thing you should be focusing on right now is or I should be focusing on is learning what these cards do to the point where I can see a card and I have a a absolute understanding of what it's going to do for most of these cards uh, I'm very far away from that and I'll never get a to 100% on that but I should be able to kind of understand some most of these things then you get into things like this where I really don't know what this even is it's is it a person on fire or is it just a big ball of fire uh, some of the art does seem like it's kind of just not descriptive enough Part of the problem is that they, they seem to love artistically. Here's a great example. Uh, they love to have the same colors and palettes in the background and go for this soft airbrushed look in their imagery, which is very 70s, very Dungeons and Dragons. Whereas if you did more of a thicker inked outline around it and went a little bit more comic booky and you dropped some of the detail in the background so it's a little bit more white in the background to, to make the wolf stand out that might be a lot better visually uh, here's another great example of that like instead of having a cloudy uh, greenish background there if they had even a bright blue background or just a clear uh, sky to contrast Seems like they kind of don't understand contrast. Here's, here's a here's decent contrast here. Some brown contrasting with very green. It seems like they, they when they make a green card, they're intentionally using a color palette that is so incredibly green that it defeats the potential lexicon of the artist uh, because it locks them into drawing and coloring they, they probably I don't know if they have different colorists than the artist uh, but I would say they probably need to fire their colorist 
or maybe they have some strict rules of this uh, because it, it, it is a mess and then I guess it, it gets maybe a little bit better if you're doing a dual color card because then they double the amount of colors they can use but seriously it sh should just be images it, it's not it's not that hard to to just draw what you want to draw and then I guess if you have a multicolored or non-colored card you can draw whatever you want but you have to have a few different colors in it well that we seem to have a decent amount of cards uh, probably not really true uh, just doing a quick scan here it does seem seem like we have a lot of things we don't have although in all fairness I think if I was to just limit myself down th those were all cards there you go not collected throne of Eldrain in core 2020 these are the cards I, I I'm care care about so each page is six uh, tw no it's each page is 12 cards so 12 24 36 48 60 um, 72 84 96 108 120 132 144 156 178 190 202 214 226 238 260 I think I might be off on my count but 263 so of the two card decks I am interested in uh, the two expansions I'm interested in right now we are 260 different individual cards short it would be nice to have been given all of the core 20 cards um, and it's still probably the smart move to to open potentially 25 packs of core 20 cards and uh, try and get this collection a lot more finished and finalized uh, but instead what I would really like to do is have ranked draft not for this like 5,000 gold to get three packs of guilds of Ravnica it's not something I want one of these like dryad creatures hmm uh, three three chances to win if you get seven victories you get an extra pack and 950 gems yep I wouldn't spend gems on this although 5,000 gold would be fine it would be smarter to do this one and open Thorns of Eldraine and this would give me three packs of hmm, which would be about 40 cards I really would I guess would have to go back and see if Thorn of Eldraine alone is really in a position where I'd want to do that hmm or am I better off just wait holding off on gold yeah that's that's really only like 36 cards and the way things drop I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of these are are the what is it 
uncommons, rares, or mythic rares. So uh, let's see if we can actually check that out. So there's seven commons. I probably would get those if I did that. There's a lot of uncommons. But then where are we on rares? Yeah, there's a decent amount of rares. And then mythic rares. Hmm. This seems like that was mo that seemed like more cards than what it was showing me the first time. Yeah, there's a s guess not. So probably wouldn't be a terrible idea to play a rank draft throne of Eldraine and when would we want to do that? Or wait until the monthly draft comes around to do core 20. Like that that would be the next thing I would want to do. Hmm. So I guess what I would do is since I'm I'm kind of just meandering here and we're going to wrap up this recording and start another recording. I guess what I would do is I would say let's wait until Monday. Wednesday would be a brawl. Monday would probably be a good I good day to do a ranked draft of Throne of Eldraine. Or I, by that point I'll, I'll mull it over on the weekend and decide whether I want to hold on to my gold or not for a ranked draft of Core 20. I should probably get Core 20s. Uh, because, yeah, the the next expansion probably is coming after Throne of Eldraine, I imagine, in January. Like, it'd be kind of funny if it came out, like, on Black Friday next week. Uh, it would be kind of weird if it came out um, in December, but maybe. Like, I, I really haven't dealt with Wizards of the Coast, so I, I don't know what their release dates are or anything like that, but I, I it would make very little sense for them to not be teasing something if, if a new expansion was coming out anytime soon. Well, anyways, that's going to be it for this recording. Stay tuned if you're watching live. As always, I ask you to like, share, subscribe, comment, and watch every second of my videos. If you want a friend to follow me on any social media sites, there's a whole bunch of links down below in the description box. And if you want to support me even further, there's a link to Patreon, or you can friend me on Steam and get me a game off my wishlist. Thank you for watching. Have a good evening.